what nobody else will tell you about the Inky List, a skincare brand that seems to be all about the ingredients, but some people call it a cheap copycat brand of the ordinary. Does the chemistry actually hold up and what's going on with the founders? <laughs> and as a little bit of background, I've been in the industry for over 10 years and I've seen a lot, both in the influencer world and in professional business settings. But before I was ever a medical esthetician or played around with cosmetic formulation or started on YouTube, I was a consumer first. And that's why I believe that people should have access to brands that match their morals and values, but that also work for their skin. And that's why I dive into ingredients lists, into formulations, and even the ethics of these companies to help you make purchases that empower you. So first off, the Inky List. Where did they get that name? Inky is actually borrowed from a term we use in cosmetic chemistry, the international nomenclature of cosmetic ingredients. These are the little lists that are written on every single product in either English or Latin. And the Inky List decided to find inspiration from that name and name their products after it, since yes, they have a huge focus on ingredients. The Inky List believes in knowledge and a lot of their products are either single ingredient or concept focused. The Inky List is like if a composition notebook met Sephora, they had a baby and their love child went to college and bought everything at Sephora and used a composition notebook to take notes in class. That is what the Inky List is. It is studious, it is a little bit nerdy, it is efficacious, but it is still fun. And although the prices are quite decent and they are available at Sephora and I believe some other retailers in the UK, they have gotten criticism for their packaging, among other other things. They even state on their website that when it comes to skincare, the most powerful ingredient is knowledge. So if you're curious, they have an Ask Inky helpline, which is very much appreciated. I have not personally used it, so is it something that is truly there for the people to help educate and empower, or is it one of those little help chats that just pushes their own products down people's throats? Here's the not so pretty truth that nobody else will tell you. Let's start off with the fact that yes, they copied the ordinary, but shockingly no. They're not afraid to admit it. When I was doing some digging, I decided to get on the phone with them. This was, again, I believe early 2020, and I straight up said, you know, I love The Ordinary. Uh, it's a very plain brand with efficacious ingredients. I, I kind of get vibes, like what's going on here? And they said, yes, we are heavily inspired by The Ordinary and we're not mad about it. They were inspired by the concept, but I can also vouch for this from personal use. They really do stand on their own. They have very different ingredients from The Ordinary, and although they still have this simplistic approach, Approach, I would argue that they're actually a lot better at educating people. They do have very minimal packaging, and if you notice, the packaging even says what time of day you should use it and where in your skincare routine it can go. This actually happened because when they were giving the testing products to their friends and family, I believe it was one of the founder's fathers actually wrote on Sharpie when to use his products AM and PM. And the Inky List saw that and said, wow, it can be frustrating and difficult to know where to put these products inside of your existing routine. So they decided to actually label that on the package, which I thought was pretty cool. And one of the main criticisms is that they are made of a ton of plastic. We always think of glass as the more eco-friendly alternative, but I do agree that when you actually hold these next to the ordinary, they feel cheaper. That's because glass actually weighs more than plastic and glass just has a more luxurious feel, even though you're getting the exact same amount of product in each container. But let's specifically talk about this phone call that I had with the founders, Colette and Mark. You see, I did some digging and I wanted to find out how they could launch a line and within two to three years be selling out of all of their products. Because yes, that is another very frustrating thing. It is hard to get your hands on these. They sell out at Sephora, they sell out at their own website, and then it takes two or three months for them to get back in stock. Now, I was introduced to the Inky List again 2019, 2020, so a lot of my experience has been through COVID, and I understand that COVID has impacted supply chains, you know, value chains and processing lines. But I'm not gonna lie, it's still frustrating because I want skincare and I'm an addict. When it comes to the founders, the way they were able to pull this off is actually attributed to their previous experience in the industry. Colette worked at Walgreens and Mark was at Boots in London. They worked together buying beauty. Essentially, for Walgreens and Boots, these drugstores, they were responsible for choosing which products ended up on shelves, which cosmetic companies they purchased from, and essentially, you know, kind of set the grounds as to what was available for you if you went inside of a store. They met or worked together at a company called Mad Brands, which actually sells vaginal products 
by the way. Again, I didn't know the Mad Brands line, but it was something like a bacterial vaginosis serum. And at first I was like, um, what? <laughs> and then when I looked at it a little bit more, I found out that the branding through that line was the idea of taking medicine and approachability, adding a little flavor of sass so that it was a product that would treat a legitimate issue that women deal with, but in a way that didn't feel overly clinical or in a way that still made personal care fun. Then you know what? Yeah, bacterial vaginosis serums that empower people to take care of their health. I can stand behind that easily. The idea from that bacterial vaginosis serum line was that they put the customer at the core of everything. And I really think that, you know, when Colette and Mark left that situation, that they did that with the inky list as well. It really is interesting to kind of pick apart all of these little user experience perks that are put onto the product and actually try to follow those lines back through the founder's history as to how they got here. Now, this is something that most people don't know. They actually have a relatively small team. I've spoken to many people on that team. And I don't know as of now, but when I spoke to them kind of as of corporate, I would say it was probably between 10 to 30 people, if even. And I don't want to say that they're struggling to keep up, but they're working very, very hard. But I think that it shows how quickly this brand has grown. And I don't think that consumers actually realize how small or how intimate that group actually is. And let's talk about intimate. I'm pretty sure that the founders are dating. This is all speculation. Like I put them on a ship and I, you know, sent them out to see from the harbor. So this is not official news. This is just from the conversation that I had with them. It was one of the best conversations. I felt like I was talking to two friends in the industry, but there was definitely chemistry between them. And I'm not just talking about products. I don't know if I'm reading into the inky list of something that is not there, but I think they would actually make a very cute couple. Yeah. I ship it. <laughs> and that's something that nobody else will tell you. Probably because it's nobody else's business, but but I didn't want to stop at just talking to the founders. I also wanted to talk to the people that they work with to make sure that they treat their employees well, that they're compensated correctly, and even the people that they work with from an advertising perspective. You see, they actually had this campaign that was all about embracing your skin. And one of the girls there is Megan. And again, this was pre-COVID, but I almost had the opportunity to hug her in person, to give her a facial, to play around with the products. But then, you know, lockdown happened and a global pandemic happened. And now we all wake up at noon, we eat pan pancakes for dinner and spaghetti for breakfast and uh, have no concept of time, weekends or weekdays. What I also liked is that the founders were able to admit that they have failed before. They failed at startups. They failed founding other companies. And to have someone express and expose those deepest insecurities and admit that they made huge mistakes, that takes a lot of guts and honesty. And the fact that both of the founders did that with me on the call, I asked them the hard questions and they answered. It was very refreshing in a way. Essentially, I truly believe that failure is a stepping stone to success. That's what it's been in my own personal life as well. And I think that if we see failure as the precursor to success, we no longer have to fear it. And I think that when a person is able to have that self-realization, we're actually able to learn from our mistakes, to share those mistakes with others, and then collectively move forward onto bigger and better things. And I think that that is probably why the Inky List has taken off so quickly in such a short amount of time. They've only been around for two to three years, but they've exploded. They're in Sephora. Everyone loves them for good reason. And it's because they weren't afraid to ask questions. They weren't afraid to learn from those things and then quickly correct them in the right way. Another critique is that they are always sold out. They are inexpensive. They are relatively cheap. I know some of their margins. Their margins are not as high as other companies, but they are effective and inexpensive and that is good. One of the other biggest critiques is that they are over-sponsored. I know a lot of influencers. I've been in marketing for 10 years. I believe in putting people over profits. There are some of us who sit in group chats and we text each other and we're in each other's Instagram DMs and we talk about these things. When a brand mistreats an influencer, you best believe I do what I can to hear about it. It takes a lot of extra work and a lot of digging, but that's why I do it. The Inky List does treat both influencers and their employees well. The price range is again, very affordable. I would say we're looking at like seven to $20. Um, very reminiscent of The Ordinary. And what's actually interesting is that they recently launched hair items in cosmetic dermatology, in skincare, in medical aesthetics. We know this. The scalp is part of the skin too, right? I have issues like psoriasis, seborrheic dermatitis. You can have different allergies, irritations, dandruff, obviously, right? You can get acne on your scalp. And again, I haven't had a chance to try these, so I really can't speak to them. But the Inky List did just launch like 10 to 15 products 
based on scalp health. So who is the Inky List for? The Inky List is for the lifelong learner. This brand is for the confused consumer and the scared skin intellectual. If you want to learn more about skincare, you want to understand ingredients, but you really don't know where to start, they make it really, really easy to do so. And I do think that that is important. Their line is entirely cruelty free, which is great. People have also questioned whether or not their products are actually efficacious or formulated well. For instance, their rosehip oil is very, very inexpensive compared to everything else. But when you actually look at it, when you check it for rancidity, it's really, really good. You know, they're putting the consumer first, which I do appreciate. Their hyaluronic acid serum is one of my favorites. It's relatively new and I really think that this is going to be like the next big thing. Hyaluronic acid can come in different weights, it can come in different textures, and sometimes depending on the ambient environment it can be a little bit dehydrating. It is made naturally by our skin, but the one that they have is super luxurious. It blends into skin quite well and it is amazing for anyone who wants hydration without that oily greasy sheen. It is definitely one of my favorite products from them and for $7.99, please and thank you. Like that is literally what you would pay for an overpriced bagel and a cup of bitter coffee at Starbucks. Some of my other favorite products from them are definitely the salicylic acid cleanser. I know that this is sold out all the time, but I have very acne prone skin. This is affordable. The ingredients are great. It doesn't dry or strip, but it actually helps with blemishes. This stuff is amazing. <laughs> Their toners are also bomb diggity. Their glycolic acid toner is phenomenal. I actually find it to be comparable to the Ordinaries, but the Ordinaries is sticky and can be burny. And if you're looking for something that doesn't burn as much and isn't sticky, um, it's kind of like tea water um, with a little bit of Splenda in it as opposed to like syrupy sugar water, which is what I would call the Ordinary. Their PHA toner is also fantastic. I absolutely love this. And they do have a peptide moisturizer and at $15, this is a nice, I wouldn't call it a complete dupe, but it is a nice secondary option to the overpriced Drunk Elephant peptide moisturizer. I think it's called the Proteiny. This is a great one. Again, the packaging is really fun. It absorbs into skin so nicely and it really protects the skin long term. You can wear this day or night. And again, a lot of their products are formulated excellently. And I'm like, how are you only charging seven to $15 for this? I don't understand. <laughs> their Q10 serum is great. Their ceramide night treatment is great, especially if you want something that has ceramides, but is not CeraVe, if CeraVe broke you out, if it didn't work for you, or just because CeraVe isn't cruelty free and the inky list is. Polyglutamic acid is phenomenal. Their turmeric is phenomenal. That one's excellent. Alpha Arbutin they have is good, especially if you combine it with the turmeric one. A lot of their products have really been hits for me. I mean, even their retinol eye cream, it's an eye safe retinol. So yes, you can use it here, but because it's retinol and eye creams are overpriced moisturizers, you can also use it everywhere else on the face. For $10, you can afford to do that. They do have a retinol face treatment as well as like a face serum, but it was sold out. So all I have is the eye cream. And you know what? I use it on my smile lines and my little scars kind of by my neck proudly. <laughs> their values are knowledge, quality, efficacy, and transparency. And my core values are education, being empowerment, helping others, and solving problems, along with authenticity, which encompasses a lot of the things that they have too. At the very beginning, I did see the parallels to the ordinary and I was kind of concerned. I was like, are you just trying to rip off the ordinary? Like I kind of got defensive. And that's when I started actually digging into the line, reaching out to contact people. And I was like, oh, this is inspired, but they're not afraid to admit that. This is good. This is different. You know, out of the horrors of 2020, this is actually one of the greatest things that we didn't know we needed. They have great customer care and the founders, I want to ship it. Like, is that unprofessional of me? Regardless of what's actually going on, they have great chemistry. And yes, that is at the office as well as in the products. So does the Inky List get the cast pass? Absolutely yes. They are phenomenal. They are efficacious. They are really what we needed. And the fact that they combine education with empowerment is something that I appreciate. Appreciate. Unfortunately, that can't be said for a lot of other brands, which shocker, we've actually spoken about right here and right here. If you want to know some of the things that nobody else will tell you about these brands, make sure that this video is liked and make sure that you have subscribed and hit the notification bell so that when we talk about more brands, you don't miss it. And that being said, go in the comment section and tell me what brands you want me to dig into the products, the ingredients, the formulations, and the ethics of next. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. Keep getting empowered through learning and through skin education, and I cannot wait to see you in one of these next videos. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.